I'm very excited to be here to talk about um, our studies on um, insulin and energy metabolism as targets for metabolic interventions um, in bipolar disorder and schizophrenia spectrum disorders. The research I'm going to present um, was carried out in the um, Psychotic Disorders Division at McLean Hospital and in the OnTrack program that we have for first episode um, bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. I have no conflicts of interest to disclose. The research was funded by the NIMH, uh, the Pope Heinz Fellowship at McLean Hospital, and with support from Harvard Catalyst. Early intervention is critical in bipolar disorder and schizophrenia spectrum disorders. Decline in functioning can begin early with major impacts on people's schooling, their work, other life activities, and their goals. And our current treatments, as we all know here, have serious side effects and don't sufficiently address major areas like bipolar depression, cognition, functioning, and people's trajectory. So there's an urgent need, as we all know, for research to identify new treatments for early intervention. I'm going to present um, some of our findings on altered brain energy metabolism measured using phosphorus um, magnetic resonance spectroscopy, MRS. Um, and then I'll also talk about our findings of reduced insulin sensitivity. With um, phosphorus um, MRS, we can non-invasively quantify major factors that are involved in energy um, production and use in the brain. So we can in vivo measure the metabolic machinery that's underlying neurotransmission and synaptic plasticity. We can measure ATP. We can also measure phosphocreatine and creatine kinase enzyme activity. Phosphocreatine acts as a reservoir of high energy phosphate bonds from ATP, and creatine kinase catalyzes the transfer of high energy phosphate from ATP to phosphocreatine, and then from phosphocreatine back to ATP when there's a need for um, ATP for cellular re reactions in cells. I'm showing a spectrum here from our phosphorus MRS, um, where you can see the different peaks of the metabolites that we measure. We do our studies on a four Tesla MRI scanner at the McLean Brain Imaging Center, looking at a frontal region of interest. Um, people just lie in the scanner with the only instruction to, um, to stay awake um, during the scan. So using a, an approach called magnetization transfer, um, we found a reduction in creatine kinase activity. In chronic course psychosis, which you see on the left, and also in first episode bipolar and schizophrenia. So these findings show us that there is um, an alteration in how um, ATP is being generated. We've also looked at um, energy metabolism in unaffected siblings of individuals with first episode psychosis. And the siblings are here um, in the middle, and we've found that there's a reduction in levels of phosphocreatine in unaffected siblings, and they look similar to um, individuals with first episode psychosis compared to control group. So this shows us that there's um, a decrease in measure of um, ATP availability, um, not only in first episode psychosis, but also in um, risk for psychosis. We can also measure brain pH, and we found that there's a reduction in brain pH in chronic course schizophrenia. Interestingly, we don't find that in first episode psychosis or um, unaffected siblings. We think that this reduction in brain pH is related to reduction in oxidative phosphorylation and a shift towards glycolysis, a less efficient form of ATP generation, which results in um, an increase in lactate and this decrease in pH that we're seeing. As to why we're seeing differences um, in chronic course versus um, first episode, it could be that there's compensatory mechanisms um, occurring um, earlier on and that these downstream effects are seen um, later on in the course of illness. 
Recently, Dose to Unger and um, Feidu have developed an approach to be able to measure NAD and NADH metabolites in the brain using phosphorus MRS. And NAD and NADH um, lie at the intersection of multiple critical biochemical reactions. Major pathways rely on these redox reactions for which um, NAD is a co-substrate, including glycolysis, the TCA cycle, um, and the electron transport chain. And so we're able to measure this ratio of NAD and NADH um, and redox balance. What we've found is that there's a reduction in this NAD and NADH ratio in early psychosis compared to a control group showing that there's this redox imbalance. And um, siblings, unaffected siblings, fall in the middle of the first episode and control group, but there's no um, statistical differences um, in that group. We're also seeing this reduction in NAD and NADH ratio in chronic course schizophrenia, although the reduction is actually not as marked um, as in um, early psychosis. Along with looking at what's going on in the brain in terms of energy metabolism, we've also been looking body-wide at metabolic abnormalities, and we found a reduction in insulin um, sensitivity in both first episode psychosis and in unaffected siblings um, compared to the control group. And we measure um, insulin sensitivity using an oral glucose tolerance test um, and an oral minimal model where we are measuring glucose and insulin at seven different time points um, throughout the oral glucose tolerance test. We also um, control for um, body mass composition measured by um, DEXA scans, as well as nutrition activity, um, resting energy expenditure, um, and cholesterol leptin levels. So these findings are showing, as other people have um, spoken about today, that there's a reduction in, insulins, um, in insulin signaling and insulin's biological effects. And this is relevant to our energy metabolism findings as um, we're learning more about um, insulin's role in regulating energy metabolism in the brain. So in sum, we found, as, as others, that there are brain and body-wide metabolism impairments present both in expression and risk for psychosis. These are promising targets for early metabolic intervention, including ketogenic therapies. And phosphorus MRS provides neurobiological markers for interventions targeting energy metabolism. Using metabolic markers, we can simultaneously probe underlying mechanisms in vivo and develop new treatments. I just want to say a note of um, gratitude to individuals and their families who have participated in this research and acknowledge our wonderful group that I feel privileged to be a part of, including my mentor, Do Stunger, Bruce Cohen, Fei Du, Xi Chen, Chara Yuxil, and our collaborators. Thank you.